Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a nurse and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to administer subcutaneous testosterone, which means um, it's going to be put into your fat. Um, it also can be referred to as sub-Q. Um, so first you're going to need some supplies and I'm going to go ahead and show you what those are. You're going to need some alcohol swabs. You're going to need a syringe. I'm using a three milliliter syringe today. And then you're going to need two needles. So testosterone is very thick and kind of hard to um, suck up. And so we usually go ahead and have you suck up the medicine with a bigger needle. It will, and I'm going to be using a 23 gauge one inch needle. Um, help if I would put it the right way. And it looks like that. And then I'm going to switch it to a 25 gauge 5 8 inch long needle um, to actually put it into my body and that looks like this and then you're going to need the vial of medicine and a band-aid so what i like to do to start off with is i have some crazy hair and if you have crazy hair or anything that might be getting in your way um go ahead and pull that back so that way you're not tempted to touch your hair and um dirty your hands because you always want to have clean hands i already washed my hands and i'm not going to bring the camera into another room and do all that process because it'd be just a big hassle so i have a hand sanitizer that i'm going to use periodically throughout this video in case I dirty up my hands again by touching the camera and everything. So you'll see me spray that on. And I'm going to go ahead and spray some on right now. All right. So if you want to go ahead and start with cleaning the area, I like to go ahead and start with cleaning the area. So that way it has time to dry because alcohol on a wound and it's going to become a wound once you puncture your leg um, stings. So uh, I usually do it first. And if for some reason you drop something or a dog or a cat brushes up your thigh or something, you can always just get another alcohol swab and wipe it down again. It's no big deal. Um, so it's not going to hurt to do it a little early. So I'm going to show you the area that I'm going to clean. Um, you'll have to excuse the band-aid. I have another, um, I guess, small little scratch already there. So it's just being covered so that way I don't go into that spot. Um, so let's see here. If you see my thigh, a good rule of thumb is to take your hand and place it down and cover that whole area. Um, so that way you know the spot that you're going to do the injection is clean. If you clean a teeny tiny spot, there's a chance that you're going to miss that area and then your site wasn't clean and then you can get infection. Um, so again, like I said, you just kind of place your hand and you want to clean that whole area. Now you see the band-aid, so I'm going to kind of use that as a landmark as well. So what I'll probably do is just clean this whole area right here because um, I'm not going to go through a band-aid and accidentally puncture a wound. Um, so let me go ahead and open my alcohol swab. And then if you see my thigh, I'm going to start in the center and make my way out. Cleaning this way ensures that you don't bring the dirty part back in to the clean part. And so that way you know the whole area is clean. Because again, if you go like this, you're bringing all the dirty stuff from over here to over here and it's just not gonna be that clean of an area. So that's the best way to clean where you're gonna be doing an injection. Um, so I touched my phone with this hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand sanitize again before I kind of touch all the products that we're going to be dealing with today. Now, my vial might look different from your vial. I'm using an old vial for a different type of medicine. It's not actually testosterone in here. It's not actually a testosterone vial. But if you have a new vial, you'll have this cap on it, and you'll just want to flick it off. It will make a sound, and that's just it coming unattached. Um, but I wanted to show that because it kind of looks... Um, 
a little weird at first. Um, if you are going back into a vial already, that's fine. Um, and you're going to do what I'm doing because this, again, is an older vial and it's not, it doesn't have the clean cap on it. So you're going to take another alcohol swab and you're going to clean the top of this vial really vigorously so that way you know that it's clean and you're not going to contaminate your needle. All right. Now, like I said, you have two needles. You're gonna to wanna to get the bigger needle. It will 100% at least be a different gauge. They could possibly be a different, or the same length. So the way that you know that you have a bigger needle is the gauge is actually gonna be a smaller number. I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you kind of think about it that way but it's just how the gauging system works. Um, if, if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, a lot of times if you look at the needle itself, it does look to be bigger and smaller. You can kind of see that this one is skinnier and this one is a little bit thicker. And also it will be a lot easier to see in person and not just through a camera lens because the plastic kind of makes it a little hard to see correctly. So I'm gonna use the 23 gauge one inch needle to draw it up because testosterone is thick. And I know mine isn't testosterone, so I'm, I'm not gonna have that much trouble as you guys might at home. Um, and that's fine. If you have to kind of fight it, it's fine. There's no race for this. Um, I'm just lucky and I get to use normal saline right now. Um, so you're gonna take your syringe out and you're gonna try your best not to touch this center part because that is what's going to screw onto your needle and so when i unwrapped my needle i pulled it out like this and i didn't touch this blue end now if you see your your syringe has two circles and the needle has one circle and so this one circle is going to go in between these two circles and then you're just going to twist like a bottle cap and you heard it probably and it's not going to twist anymore so you can go ahead and take it out and you have it all connected now mine has this cool little fail safe to to use when you're done um, so that way you don't have to recap some needles do that because it's usually safer to just flip this up than it is to recap however if you also look at mine this is as far as it goes it's not getting stopped i mean it kind of is getting stopped because of the cap still on but you'll see in the end that it doesn't really close around the needle. So you still want to be really careful with these. Um, but like if yours has this, you're going to want to go ahead and ring that down. So that way it's out of the way. Um, so I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this syringe out. If you, as you're working this, if the syringe pulls out, you can always put it back in. But I just want to pull it out there so you can kind of see... This is kind of a hump. It usually works when I put it against my red shirt there. Um, so you can see the hump on this plunger. When you measure things, you want to measure it to the flat part the, and not the top. You want to measure it again to this flat part. I'm not touching it because it's going into the syringe and I don't want to get it dirty. All right, now that's back in there. I can show you how most of these work. Mine, again, is a three milliliter syringe. So if I pull this out of the way a little bit, you can see that I have big lines and little lines. My big lines are this top one, which is zero. And then you have a half a milliliter, one milliliter, one and a half milliliters, two milliliters, two and a half milliliters, and three milliliters all the way down here. It's getting blocked by my plunger. Um, and then these little ones are um, like 0.1. So you got, like I said, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and then 0.5 or half a milliliter. For today's purpose, um, a lot of times we necessarily aren't giving a whole lot. And so I'm not going to give myself a whole lot, at least not when you're first doing testosterone. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use 
I'm going to administer two milliliters, or sorry, not two, <laughs> 0.2 milliliters of fake testosterone into my thigh. So if you pull the plunger back, I'm going to pull it back then to the second little line, because again, this big one is zero. So I'm going to measure it, make sure that's right. Yes. Um, all the way to that second middle line. Again, it's can, it can be really hard to see on the camera because of this um, black plunger. I wish it came in a different color, so it'd be easier to teach you guys. Um, but you're gonna suck up that air because what you're gonna do is then put it into the vial and that causes pressure. So it's easier to draw up and anything to make your life easier is the best. And um, so now you're going to go ahead and uncap that. And you're gonna be putting this needle in the gray part, um, cause that's where the squishiness is. The rest of it's kind of metal and hard. So you'll go ahead and put the needle in. It doesn't have to be smack dab in the middle, just anywhere in that dark part. You're gonna go ahead and push that air in. And then you're gonna lift this upside down. You're gonna wanna make sure if you look on mine, let's see if I get it there. I don't know if you can tell where my fluid is, but my needle is outside of the fluid because it's so long. So you're gonna wanna bring that needle down a little bit. So that way it's actually in the fluid. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw up 0.2. Now you can tell clearly I have more than 0.2 in here. That's fine. I'm gonna now flick it a little bit just to make sure all of the air is at the top. And then I'm gonna flip it around so I can actually see what I'm doing really fast. But what I'm doing now is I'm pretty much pull, pushing the plunger up to the 0.2 milliliter line and I'll show you when I get that, which I pretty much kind of did well, um, when I was facing him. So now it's at the 0.2 milliliter line. And you can go ahead and flip it right side back up so that way the fluid's not at the tip here because if you pull it out upside down, some fluid will leak out. Um, but right now, air is at the top, and so no fluid will fall out of there. Now, because we went ahead and got all the air out, so that would be no, we have 0.2 milliliters. There's some medicine in this needle still and in this blue part. So you're going to have to pull this plunger back, so that way you do get some air. But you'd want to flick all the air out and do what I did prior to taking my needle out so that way you know that you have the right measurement and then go ahead and suck air in and then you'll want to go ahead and close this see it's not really protecting me at all if I went to go unscrew this cap like I can't push that anymore so I'm not going to use it that way I'm going to recap my needle so if you're gonna recap your needle, you wanna make sure that you're only touching the sides. If you touch this end where my blue um, nail is, it can sometimes, if you push it on too hard, it can cause this needle to come out the other end and poke you in the finger, and that's never fun. And then your needle's dirty and you'll have to get a new needle and kind of start over a little bit. So now that we've gotten all of the medicine out of this needle and we've recapped it, we can go ahead and unscrew and now it's trash. Now you don't wanna go and sit this down on the counter because you can see that this center bit sticks out more. And if you just sit this down on the counter, it then gets dirty and then everything inside of the syringe and needle is dirty. So if you can't open this new needle while holding the syringe, that's fine. What I would say is then to keep this needle on, sit it down on the counter, and go ahead and open this guy, which is your smaller needle that you're gonna use to inject yourself with. And you're gonna go ahead, and again, you're gonna open it without touching the actual tip of it. And then you're gonna go ahead and screw it on just like the other one. And now you have it on there. Now again, you're gonna flick your syringe so that way you know all of the air is up top. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and uncap mine just so you can see better, but you don't have to. Um, at home, you'll be able to see it, but because it's through a camera, it's, it makes it more difficult to see. So I'm gonna uncap it, and I'm gonna show you when you're pushing the air out, you're gonna do it until you see a tiny drip of um, the medicine kind of come out of this needle, and then you know that all the air is out. Because if you wait, and I don't know if you can see the fluid, if you wait until the fluid is just here and you don't see any air in this section, there's still air in this needle and you don't really want to inject yourself with air. It's not going to kill you like it does in the movies, um, but it, you don't really want that. So you're going to keep going. Oh, see? And now I know all of the air is out. So I'm going to go ahead and recap again because if you haven't already, good thing that I like to do is I like to go ahead and take my band-aid out of the wrapper so that way once I know that um, I'm done injecting and I'm done poking myself, I have a, um, a band-aid ready to go. Now, I'm gonna set you up here. I didn't touch you with this hand yet, so I'm going to take my camera and maneuver you to here so that way you can see what I'm doing so I'm gonna take my clean hand and I'm gonna pinch my thigh so that way all the fat is right there and also pinching kind of can take away some of the pain that you might feel from the injection so I'm gonna go ahead and get my needle I'm gonna uncap it and then with my clean hand I'm gonna make sure that I pinch and then I'm just gonna go in and it can be straight I'm just gonna go and put it in, administer the med, and then I'm gonna unpinch, so that way I don't squeeze all that medicine out, and then I'm gonna take my needle out. You can see that I gave it all to me, not even bleeding. I'm gonna go ahead and recap, and then I'm gonna stick, oh, you can see a little blood now. And I'm going to stick a band-aid on. Make sure you don't touch this um, white part of the band-aid because then you got your band-aid dirty and it defeats the whole purpose of keeping it clean and safe. So again, that is how to inject testosterone uh, subcutaneously or into your fat. If you don't like the idea of it going into your thigh, another place that you can do is your stomach. The stomach just feels like a really sensitive spot for me to poke, and so the thigh just seems to be a better option for me. I hope you found this um, educational and enjoyed it. Bye.